Hello everyone. Today we are back at the Jiggly Park. It's been over a year and the reason we're back is the park is now fully open. And so today we're here to check out the two new exhibits and to see if there's been any changes to the previous areas. So let's get going. We can see House Moving Castle from here already. Over there. Because my favorite Ghibli movie is House Moving Castle. And today we are coming to the brand new session of House Moving Castle. I'm super excited. Like before, you definitely need to get a ticket in advance. And so to get a ticket, you actually have to get the tickets about two months in advance. For example, for the June tickets, they go on sale in April. Before you have to buy tickets to each of the areas separately. Luckily now, they also sell a, basically a combo ticket, which is called the Premium Pass, that gives you access to all five areas together with just one ticket, which definitely makes things a lot easier. So we are actually a little early to the park. The park doesn't open until 10 a.m. Unfortunately, we can't go inside right now, but we're able to come to this lookout point, which is at the top of the hill right next to the Valley of the Witches and get a sneak peek into it. And we'll be going inside as soon as it opens. We can see the house moving castle from here. So clear, so close. We can actually see the staff setting up right now still. Oh my God, there's so many people waiting in line to enter the Valley of the Witches right now. This is crazy. I guess it's expected of a brand new area though. So with the premium ticket, you can actually visit any of the areas in any order that you want, except for the Grand Warehouse. And so for us, the ticket happens to be at 10 a.m. And so we'll be starting with this and checking out what's new here. And then we'll go explore all the other areas. Time to go into the Grand Warehouse again. Yay! Since we couldn't buy anything last time, so when we first came here, we just come to the Sylvania store. They added so many boys and the herons products here. It seems like a lot of other people have the same idea as us to visit the gift store first. Yee! Finally got this back! Last time we couldn't buy anything because uh, there's a long queue we couldn't get in. So today, we finally bought a lot of souvenir for myself, yeah. Now we've bought our souvenirs, time to go look around and see what's changed here in the Grand Warehouse. Oh wow, look, it's the Oscar award. They put the actual Oscar award here. It's my first time to see an actual Oscar award that close. Huge congrats to the boy in the hair for winning the best animated picture this year. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely recommend watching it as well. Apparently the award was only placed here starting yesterday, so lucky us to be able to see it. They added the heron from the new movie we spotted. Oh, and there's a bunch of pelicans. They added a new statue here. We think it's related to the boy and the hero's movie, but we don't know what exactly it is. Can you guys let us know? Oh, <laughs> there we go. We found that. Don't kill me, don't eat me. You can see he's holding a knife behind his back. See? Ooh, don't eat me, don't eat me. I'm running away. Ooh. Look, this is new too. It's the radish spirits from Spirit Away. It's so large, it's larger than my imagination. We just finished a full tour of the Grand Warehouse again. Overall, most things are still the same as last time, but there are a couple changes. Most notably, there's quite a few new Boy and the Heron statues. And so if you want to see the full highlights of everything else to see in the Grand Warehouse, definitely recommend checking out our previous video here at Ghibli Park. But now we're gonna check out the two brand new areas here and hopefully it's not too crowded. It is so windy today, or dare I say it's because the wind rises. The next area we're visiting is Mononoke Village. Come on, let's go. This area actually opened up last year in November, but since it was just only this place that opened up, we decided to wait until now so we visit both this area as well as the Valley of Witches. This area doesn't look very big. There's a hut area and then a couple statues which we'll go get a closer look. There's two giant statues, one of one of the demon spirits and one of Lord Okoto. And actually, the statue of Lord Okoto actually also doubles as a slide for little kids to ride down. The main building in this area is a hut that's supposed to look like one of the huts in the village from the movie. And inside, there's actually a mochi cooking experience. I don't think the mochi actually has much to do with the movie. I think it's actually more to do with the local Aichi area. And so, we've decided to skip it. It's about 1,200 yen per person. Okay, so that wraps up Mononoke Village. It's actually quite small. Again, and there's two statues, there's a village hut, there's a small rest area that sells only a couple small goods, and overall, one of the smaller areas, if not the smallest area out of all the five. I kind of feel like it's a missed opportunity at the Mononoke village where they didn't have the wolf god. I feel like having one of those large wolf statues would have been cooler than the statues they chose to depict. 
There is a new cat bus which you can take from here, which is a Mononoke village to the Dongdoko forest. Unfortunately, we think it's a little bit pricey because it takes 1,000 yen for adults and 500 yen for kids. But I think it's gonna be fun for kids, right? We're going to the Valley of Riches. <laughs> Time to enter the actual main area. The first thing you have when you enter the Valley of the Witches is the restaurant. And since we're so hungry right now, time to get some lunch. We're waiting to get into the restaurant, but there is a long queue already. It's only 11 a.m., but the queue is super long here. Mm, I guess the queue is getting longer and longer because it's uh, closing to the lunch time, but I'm so hungry now. The restaurant here actually is slightly witch themed and we order a dark curry and a shepherd's pie. Better than I thought. <laughs> dark curry. It's just like normal curry, but it looks very dark. Just finished the lunch. I'm going to explore the witch village. We are going to another Sylvania store. It's called the Witch Coven. So it's a comparison to Sylvania store in the Grand Warehouse. Here, they have more house moving castle related products. So you can see a Kalushi van here. It's so big, so cute. I bought a lot again. I got a Gigi. And I also got a very, very cute notebook. See, I don't think you can find it somewhere else outside of the Ghibli Park, but this is so cute, I just couldn't control myself. And Brian got this for me. It's a calcifer. It's hot. Don't get too close to him. There's also a lot of very unique items here at this gift store, so definitely check this one out. And apparently there's also some limited edition items that since we came here a little bit later in the day have already been sold out. I think the most notable one is the giant Heen plushie that we see a bunch of people walking around with. So if you want that, it's limited edition. Definitely come here first thing in the morning. Otherwise, I guess you'll be out of luck. I'm about to go in the, is the house of the witches, but photo and video is not allowed inside, so I'll shut down here. So one of the things to point out about the premium ticket is it also allows you entry inside a bunch of the houses here in the Valley of the Witches. And so since we have the premium ticket, we can go inside the Witch House, House Castle, as well as the Okino Residence. And so definitely recommend getting the premium pass because it allows you entry into all the different places here. We're waiting in the line to go into the bakery from Kiki's Delivery Service. There's a huge line here. We have been waiting for a certain minutes, but still halfway to go, I think. People are waiting here to buy the bread from the bakery. So looking forward for it. We finally got into the bakery. It smells so good already. This is the red we finally got the bread, which took one hour to get inside the bakery. And then we finally bought it. An alternative to the bakery, if you don't want to wait over an hour in line, is if you go around the corner of the bakery, there's actually a cart that sells sets of breads, and there's basically no line for that. But one word of caution is they do sell out. And so right now it's about two o'clock right now, and they've already sold out for the day. We got this a um, no bread. It looks so cute, but we don't know what exactly it is. I'm so hungry. Let's have a bite first. Mmm! There's something inside. It tastes like mochi. Personally, I think getting a set will save a lot of time. You don't need to queue for going into the bakery. It's, it's the castle. It's the moving castle. We're finally going inside the castle. The castle's moving. It's moving. It actually doesn't move that frequently. It only moves maybe once an hour or so. So perfect front row seats. There's a big photo shooting opportunity here. So the turnip is standing in front of the castle. So you can take a picture from a very good angle from here. Are you a good boy? We're waiting to go inside the house moving castle. Unfortunately, photo and video is not allowed inside, so we can just so use uh, what it looks like outside, but we will just uh, post some photo here to show you what it looks inside. The staff tell us you have to knock twice to get in to avoid hitting people inside. 
unfortunately you can't take photos and videos inside of the castle, which is quite a shame because the inside is just so intricately decorated and really, really amazing. It actually makes you feel like you're actually in the movie. And like every single room, there's just so many decorations. There's actually a couple really cool areas where they have like digital trinkets that makes it feel like really cool and really magical as well. We really wish we could show you all the inside of it, but since we can't have photos, you'll just have to go visit it for yourself and see it with your own eyes. We are checking what's inside the fireplace. Let's see. There's a Kalushima! Hi! You're the soul, you're the spirit, you're the energy of the whole castle. If you guys remember the door on the inside of the castle, when you twist the knob, it actually changes the location that the castle goes to. And so they actually replicated that as well inside the castle. So if you twist the doorknob, they have this art piece and dial, which will also change to reflect what the doorknob is, which is such a neat little bonus that they've added inside of this castle. Oh, look, it's how. I'm just literally crying because as I mentioned in our last video, House Moving Castle is my favorite Ghibli movie. And then they really made this come true and everything is so real. Oh, so touched. I will watch the movie 100 times after I came back. They've done such an amazing job creating a full-size replica of House Moving Castle. It's actually so large and several floors. This is also a house from the set of Howl's. We mentioned in our last video how the Ghibli Park doesn't really have any traditional rides or attractions, but in the new area of the Valley of Witches, there's actually two rides that have opened up that you can ride. One is for kids, which is called the Flying Machine, and it's only for kids aged 3 to 12, while the other one is a carousel or merry-go-round that anyone can go ride on for 1,000 yen for adults and 500 yen for kids. Time to go to ride the merry-go-around. Yes, I chose the roomstick with the Gigi on the top. Oh, when the music just started, my tears is coming out because I, this is my favorite song for my favorite movie, House Moving Castle. So fun fact, the song that plays during the merry-go-round is so perfect because the name of the song that plays during the ride is called the merry-go-round of life. Time to visit Kiki's house. As always, no photos inside. Huh? <laughs> Time to go inside. Oh my god, just like all the other areas, there's so much detail inside this place that I wish I could show you guys. And so we'll try to show you some photos from the official sites, but again, you'll probably have to check this out yourself if you want to immerse and explore the house that Kiki grew up in. As an alternative to the restaurant, if you want a quicker bite to eat, there is this hot tin roof that sells hot dogs that have a cat paw as the bun, which is kind of creative. I guess it fits the theme of all the cats that are here. And the line's much shorter if you don't want to wait in the line for the restaurant, which we ended up waiting about like an hour or so to get our food. I'm actually so impressed. There's so many buildings actually here in the valley, which is actually a lot larger than I expected. And so we've been here for several hours already right now, and there's still a couple more things to explore. There's a couple stores, a bunch of places to buy food. There's like the bakery, there's a stand that sells hot dogs, there's obviously the restaurant. And in terms of the stores, there's a main store, but then also you have like the hat store that sells the hats that Sophie made. There's also several places that you can go inside that, again, photos aren't allowed with Howl's Castle, you have the Okino Residence, the House of Witches. This new area is definitely one of the highlights. And so I actually feel like this area is comparable in size to the main warehouse. Honestly, you may need a good half day or full day here as well. Last time, we didn't get tickets to the Hill of Youth, and so this time with the premium ticket, we can actually access this area. And so even though I think the inside you don't allow photos, we can still show some more close-up videos of what it is when we enter this area. We found a mini house from the movie The Cat Returns. We couldn't get in because we are too big, but we still have a chance to get very close and then look inside. Like all the other interior places, also no photos or videos allowed inside here. But the one highlight that we do want to call out is definitely wait for the performance from the grandfather clock that happens about every 30 minutes or so. And it's basically a replica of what happens in the movie as well. Okay, and one last thing to mention, if you haven't bought enough Ghibli goods, there is one store after you leave the park and right before you get to the train station that you can buy some more Ghibli goods before you head back home. So we just arrived on another full day here at Ghibli Park. And so this time we had the premium ticket and we were able to access all five areas that are now open here. And so to be honest, I actually don't think there's enough time to visit all the different areas because the park only opens at 10 a.m. and closes at 5 p.m. And if you really wanna see everything, you don't really have enough time because 
in a lot of the areas, even though you can't take photos or videos inside, there's still so much to see. There's so much details in all the different exhibits. I love how they brought a lot of different parts of the movie to life. Unless you decide to skip a bunch of the stuff, don't buy anything, you're really not gonna have enough time to see everything. And to be honest, you may need maybe like two days to actually see everything and fully enjoy everything that this park has to offer. I'm so happy and so touched because finally I can see all the sets and all the scenes from house come to life and it's like a dream came true. I'm so happy. So thank you guys again for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour of the full Ghibli Park now and we'll see you guys in our next video. Bye! -bye.